Hi and welcome back to another tutorial of Clo. This time we will take a look at the normal map, displacement map, at colors and how to express various textures in Clo as well as reflection. So what you can see here is our male avatar wearing a basic garment of Clo that you can find in the library. And in order to learn more about the texture expressions from the properties of this default fabric that is already applied to the garment, I'll click on it and look at everything that appears in my property editor on the right. The first thing we will take a look at is the normal map. And in order to check the normal map, we will have to apply a texture. So we can check the normal map here and in order to do so I'll apply a texture provided by the Clo standard library. When I go to the library I will have to double click on the fabric folder just like this and then I get a standard library of 50 default fabrics where I can look for something with more texture. In our case I will search for leather. I'll just type it in here in the search bar and then two leather options pop up and I hover over them with the mouse. I'll get a thumbnail as a preview so I can decide which leather I want to choose. In our case, I'm going for the leather lambskin. And I'll simply drag it over and drop it onto my default fabric to apply it to the whole garment at once. So all fabrics provided by our Clo library are fabrics that contain already both the texture and the physical properties of a fabric. So to take a closer look, I'll zoom in here and have a look at the texture in 3D. And there are not only textures, there's more, there are also maps. And the normal map here plays a very important role. You can see it here, it's expressed in purple. And its function is basically that allows you to express the texture of a three-dimensional material in a more realistic way. I'm just blending it in here so as you can see the image is purple texture and this is what we call a normal map. This purple normal map will help you to express shades of a texture realistically. And generally in Clo, when there's a little triangle next to a menu point in for example the property editor here, that means there is a submenu so as soon as you click on it a more detailed submenu pops up. So I'll just click here. Then I open my submenu and if I play around with the intensity, I can set the value of how intensely I want the normal map to work. So if you adjust the intensity value like this, you will see that the texture expression on the left 3D window will look very different. Also, if you adjust the values to positive or negative, just as I'm playing around with it here, you can see how the texture gets inverted depending on which value you go for. So just in general, by adjusting the normal map and its intensity like this, the material texture can be made more realistic. So in this case, we had a fabric file, so the normal map was already attached to the file that we dropped in here, but also you can get one automatically generated. So before I continue with the material that I prepared in advance and added to the library, I will now delete the texture here and also the normal map. I'll do so by clicking on the little trash icon next to texture in the property editor, just like this, and then refreshing the normal map as well. So it's updated, now you can see there is none. And then I go over to the library, click on material, just a double click and because I searched for leather before, right now you can't see anything, so I have to delete that from the search bar. And then I can see here the artwork that I prepared before, which I can now find in this folder and drag it over to the texture. And if you put it into texture, right now there is no normal map applied not as with the fabric file that we've been using before. So I can simply click on the density value here, move it upwards and create a normal map for it automatically. If you keep playing around with it, you can watch again the 3D window and see how the normal map and the intensity here changes. So like this, even when there is no normal map on an artwork or texture before, it can be automatically created. You can also always save that automatically generated map 
If you go to File up in the menu bar, up here on the top left, you can go under the menu Save As. And here, if you select Surface Textures, you can set the path to save the image by selecting it at the bottom. So now we can take a look at the displacement map. The displacement map can be used to express the thickness of graphics or the uneven texture of a fabric and can be found here in the property editor. An important information that you need to keep in mind when you use a displacement map is that you can check the applied result only in the render window. So in order to demonstrate, I will now put a graphic on the garment and then check the displacement map in my property editor accordingly. So again, I'll use the file that I previously added to the library, going to my materials folder and choose first of all a graphic that I want to use here. So I'll apply this PNG file and in order to apply it as a graphic, I can right mouse click on it and then select add as graphic so I can add it onto my garment. And as soon as you have done that, you can directly click on your garment where you want to put it. So the graphic input window for adding graphics appears where you can then type in your measurements. Here I'll simply leave them as they are and then click OK because I'm happy with the size. And also the guidelines give you a preview how big it will be. And when you now look at it on the garment, it's simply a flat image. So I will add the displacement map. And because we're working with a graphic, I will choose the transform graphic tool of my 2D menu bar or the 3D menu bar. It can be found here in 2D. I'll simply select this one click directly on my graphic. So I now get the properties for this one up in my property editor, where I can then also add the displacement map in the according submenu under material. So it basically works the same way as working on a fabric. So I pick my displacement map, drag and drop it over to the displacement map tab here, and then I can start tweaking my values. Just as mentioned before already, I need to turn on the render window in order to get a correct preview of what I'm actually doing with my displacement map. So I'll also run the interactive render preview so I can see what is happening with the displacement map here. And as shown in the preview here on the right, you can already see the displacement map is working because it lifts the graphic up an amount of 3 millimeters, which is the default value in the property editor. It's literally creating an effect of visual thickness. So if you rotate around the garment and also again watch the render preview, you can see the thickness from all angles. So the displacement map consists of achromatic, white and black colors. And just to give you an example here, when you look at the graphic, the outside of the graphic doesn't look very nice, which is set here as an example to show you that when creating a displacement map, you have to increase the resolution and apply the Gaussian blur effect in Photoshop. This way you can make the effect here on the outline smoother. So then I'll now apply a blur effect to the displacement map using Photoshop. So if I have Photoshop open, you can see already the image that was used to create the displacement map already before and I have it loaded. From here, just go to the filter in the main menu, up here on the top, then select blur and just select Gaussian blur effect. Click on it, set your radius to a value of something like 2.5, 2.4 and click OK. And then simply save this image as a separate file so you can put it into the material folder that you have linked already to your Clo library just like here and can work directly with the now created new displacement map in Photoshop here from the library. The image is now called displacement blur shown here also in the preview and this is the one we have just edited in Photoshop. So I'll now drag and drop this onto the displacement map tab for this graphic. And if your render preview is inactive, you will have to start it again up here on the left icon interactive render.
So once you've started this and it has recalculated the preview, you can already see on the new preview, the outline of the graphic is now much cleaner and smoother with the new displacement map with the blur applied. And now in the next step, let's just check the submenus of the displacement map below. So here on the right in the property editor, on the displacement map, the submenu, you have certain values and the first one is amount which has the function to adjust the height of your displacement map so it comes with a default value of three millimeters this means when creating a map you can think of adjusting the height of the byte area so looking at our example here the clow is written in white that means it will be the highest amount and then the clow virtual fashion is written in gray which will be the mill height and the background is here expressed in black so that means there won't be any height created so the default amount here of three millimeter literally means that the height of the white letters of clow is three millimeter elevated from the garment and kind of giving an expression of thickness here. So just for example, I will type in a higher value, let's say the double amount, amount of six millimeters height. It will just create an even thicker graphic here on my garment, just like that, typing in six millimeters. Now you can see how the graphic just became much thicker. And then the next function, shift, which is the parameter right below, it's basically the function that allows you to adjust the space between the displacement map and the garment itself. So right now I'll just rotate again to show you how the height of this graphic increased and how big it looks now. And then there may be also cases where the garment and the surface are slightly separated from each other. So here I will then tweak the value for shift. I'll type in a negative value to bring it closer to the garment. In our case, I'll start with minus two. Just put it in here. And now you can clearly see how the gap between the graphic and the garment became more narrow. So even if I type in an even lower value here, it already looks like it's kind of going into the garment and like this you can really define which outcome you want to have as a look. And also the shift value always relates to the white area of your displacement map. So if you take a closer look here you can see how the gray area of your displacement map completely disappeared. So in case you want to bring the gray area back I start trying by adjusting the shift value. Type in a value of minus two here. And if that doesn't help yet, I can also rework my amount, type in a higher value here, for example, 10 millimeters, and can now see how my gray area is slightly coming back up. Then the value for clipping below represents the cutting height. So the background part of the created image here is expressed in black. And if the geometry remains, this is a function that can be used when you want to remove geometry from a specific area. Like shift clipping also changes the value from 0 to 0 0.1. And if you change it like this, you can also remove the geometry here. So the particle distance then comes below and it's the same as the particle distance used when working on the garment. So it represents the particle distance within the graphic of the displacement map. So also here, the lower the particle distance, the more angular and smoother it will look also on the graphic expressed when you take a render. It's literally the same like adjusting the particle distance of a garment. So also here, just keep in mind, the lower the value is, the more it may affect also the speed. And then keep continuity is a function that can be used to remove the boundary by just extending the boundary. So it's a function that can be used in an OBJ, like a hexadron similar to a normal angled image. And then in the next step, I'll turn off the render and check the color.
This time I choose the default fabric instead of the graphic. Color can be specified by clicking on this white square next to it. So your color menu will come up. And that's a function that allows you to set the color to change the unique color of the fabric. So you can change the color by clicking on the color in this window and change it gradually. You can work by changing the saturation, by changing the color from the bottom like this. Using the eyedropper tool, you can click on the place you want to pick the color you want. And what is important to know about the eyedropper tool that it doesn't only work within the Clow window, but you can also use it on any window in your computer. So if you have an image up somewhere else, you can also move it over there and pick up the color from here. So if you have the color image file you want, you can always pick it up from there, click on the file to pick up the color, or you simply look at the color on a website and click on it. Or you can also reflect it as it is. And if you know the color number, you can also enter the number here to find the color. You can also add the currently selected color to the palette below. And you can add frequently used colors to this palette and then save it. So if you click the add icon in the color you have selected now, the color is added like this. And the palette can also be enlarged or reduced by adjusting the scroll. And you can load the save palette file from the icon on the right or save this palette file that you have right now. If you click on the icon on the right, all of the custom palettes are reset. Like this, a palette that shows only colors with a square. When you click the list view, the color and also the name pop up. So with this one, you can change the view you see in various ways, just like this, clicking on it. You can also check the name by hovering over the mouse cursor over this palette. And you can change it by double clicking directly on the color. If you want to delete it, select the color you want to delete, then click. And you can delete it by pressing the delete key on your keyboard. On the right is the palette library. So in this palette library, you can check the Pantone color card that Clo is currently offering. If you know the name of your Pantone color you want, you can easily find it by searching here below. Just like with the palette on the left, clicking the list view and checking the name. You can also choose a color and if you click the icon to the left of it, you can also directly copy this Pantone color to your custom palette. So this window pops up and it asks you whether to create a new palette from it or to add it to the one that you're currently using. And then lastly, in case you choose new one, you basically choose to remove all existing custom palettes on the left side. And now the last point for today, we will look at reflection. So I still have my default fabric selected, move to the property editor and open the submenu for reflection. And there are two adjustable variables like roughness and then reflection intensity. So roughness simply is the ability to spread the light and make it look like it's not there. So first of all, if I'm going to adjust the roughness value now and change it from 50 down to zero like this, the garment will then suddenly look very, very shiny it will get expressed as there is some kind of light. So the roughness is a function of spreading the light, but since the value is changed to zero, the light here is gathered without spreading, which gives my garment a very shiny effect. And also the opposite way is the value increases, the light spreads more, which will create the effect of a very matte texture. So you can watch it here, spreading more and creating a more matte effect.
And then the next parameter, the reflection intensity, right below, is the amount of the reflected light. So in other words, it basically means the intensity of the light. So if you change the value of 15 to a higher value, because there is a lot of reflected light, basically the roughness value is low. It will be directed as if the shiny fabric shines even stronger. So adjusting the reflection intensity and roughness of a fabric can create a completely different texture effect. But also working with these values, they cannot only be used for fabrics, but for example also for avatars. So if I change here to the Select Move tool, shortcut Q, and click on my avatar, and then I'm going to choose the avatar skin. So this time the skin is separated from the head, body, arms and legs. I can also right mouse click and say select all faces so I can edit them all together at once. And then I go over here to my property editor where it shows me the avatar skin. And if I scroll down here under the material selected, I can now tweak the roughness and the reflection intensity here for the complete avatar skin all at once. So right now in 3D it looks a bit overdone. So I will also cross check in my render window and open the render window up from the menu up there. Also update my interactive render preview. So here you see how you can create moderately shiny skin like this very easily. So if you want to use the texture of the avatar skin when creating some artwork, you can also directly use the reflection function just as I showed you here. So this would be it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to leave comments if you have further questions and see you next time.